Hello Haskellings! Well, just so you know, I'm going to take this Tuple Sections language extension and actually put that into the build system because it's a bit annoying having to put that in every file when I need it because it actually doesn't hurt me to have it turned on all the time. The other thing that annoys me actually is the quote characters around the string. Now, I understand that read and show need to be jewels of each other, but a lot of the time I actually do want to just show the string. So I'm going to create a new type called str, and it's going to have its own instance of show, which doesn't show the quotes. That way I can use this new type to show a string without the quotes like that. Well, enough about strings. We have a pressing issue at hand. We need to beat a crab at cards. Let's start with a quick look at the input. We can see that it's in two groups and there's a header line for each group. We can import the advent of code module, and because it's in blank line separated groups, we use interactG to read it. We can pattern match on those groups and ignore those title lines using a pattern like this. Let's convert those all to integers using map read, and then call those C's and D's for the cards of player 1 and player 2 respectively. Let's make a function called turn, which is going to play a round of this game. It's going to take in the two decks and then return the deck of the winner. The rules say that we take the top card from each deck and then compare them to see which one is bigger. The winner's card and the loser's card get added to the bottom of the winner's deck in that order. We call turn recursively until one of the players has no more cards, in which case we return the deck of the winner. So we need to multiply each of these numbers by its position in the deck. The positions count downwards, starting with the number of cards, which is n. We can use zip with like this to do the multiplication, and then sum the resulting terms. And now we can check that answer, and that gives us a gold star. In part 2 we have some sort of recursive version of this game, so let's get to it. We can start by making a copy of the main turn function, and then we can use a guard to test against the condition for the recursive game. The condition is that both players have at least as many cards remaining in their deck as the value of the card they just drew. The first thing we should check is if there was a previous round in the game with those exact same cards then the game ends in a win for player 1. So we use a set to keep track of the positions that we've already seen in this game. We can now check to see if our current position is a member of that set. And if so, we return... Well, actually we need a boolean value to represent who has won. So we return true to suggest that player 1 has won this round. If we haven't seen this position before, then we need to insert this position into the set for the next turn. Now the decks we pass to the next turn are going to depend on a recursive game. We only care about the winner and not the resulting deck, so let's use a let clause to pattern match on just the winner. The cards for the recursive game are taken as specified in the rules, and then after determining the winner, the cards C and D are added just like before. The non-recursive game case will also need to check the set, and I'm starting to get the feeling like we're copying and pasting a bit too much code, but let's push on anyway. Right, so we're also going to need the recursive call to take the updated set. But of course we need to update our base cases and also pass the empty set to the initial call. The base cases will also need to return the boolean value for the winner. And finally we need to pattern match away the boolean winner value from the top level call. With all of that fixed, it's time to check our answer. Fantastic. Happy Haskelling everyone.